Oh boy. Find VO in this OPAM circuit. Let's get started by naming the nodes. We have three OPAMs and we'll call them 1, 2, and 3 going left to right. We'll call this node VN1 since it's the inverting or negative input of OPAM1. We'll call this node VP1 as in positive for OPAM1. And this VO1 meaning output of OPAM1. And we'll keep this going. We'll call this node VN2 meaning this node should be VN2 as well, right? Because it's just a connection with a wire. This node will be VP2, VO2, VP3 over here, and finally we have VN3. Okay, let's get started. Any ideal op-amp is governed by two constraints. The voltage at the inverting input, VN, must be equal to the voltage at the non-inverting input, VP. Also, no current enters either terminal of an ideal op-amp because the assumption is that it has infinite input resistance. Most modern amplifiers are almost ideal, so the assumption that an op-amp is ideal is not very erroneous. Okay, so we'll have those two constraints on the side, and we'll start writing equations for op-amp 1, 2, and then 3. Starting with op-amp 1, notice that the non-inverting input is grounded, so VP1 must be 0. By the first constraint, this must be VN1 as well. And now we'll write a KCL equation at the node labeled VN1. We have this current entering the node and this current leaving the node. By the second constraint, we know that no current goes to the inverting input of op-amp 1, so those are the only two currents we should worry about. The node voltage equation gives us Vs1 minus Vn1 over 25 kilo ohms equals Vn1 minus Vo1 over 50 kilo ohm. Both resistors are in kilo ohm, so the units will correct themselves. There's no need to write 25,000 and 50,000 in the denominator. We know that Vn1 is zero, so we can simplify this equation and then multiply both sides by 50, giving us Vo1 equals negative 2 Vs1. Okay, so we've completed the analysis of the first stage of this amplifier circuit. Moving on, notice that VP2 is zero as well because the non-inverting input of the second amplifier is also grounded. Again, this must be Vn2 and we can write a KCL equation all the same. Except it's a little more complicated this time because not only do we have this current and that current, but we also have this current coming from Vs2. So the nodal equation will be Vo1 minus Vn2 over 100, that's the first incoming current, plus Vs2 minus Vn2 over 50, the second incoming current, equals the current leaving, Vn2 minus Vo2 over 100. Remember, by the second constraint, no current enters the negative input of OPAM2, so these are all the currents at play. Again, we know Vn2 is zero, so the equation is simplified a great deal. And we can multiply throughout by 100, giving us Vo2 equals negative Vo1 plus 2Vs2. But we already know what Vo1 is from the first stage of the analysis. So we can substitute negative 2Vs1, and this gives us Vo2 equals 2Vs1 minus 2Vs2. And this completes the second stage of the analysis. Finally, for OPAM3, notice that VP3 is exactly equal to Vo2 because the output of the second amplifier is connected to the positive input of the third amplifier with just a wire. 
but we just calculated VO2 from the second stage of the analysis. So VP3 must be this 2VS1 minus 2VS2. By the first constraint, this must be Vn3. And now we'll write a KCL equation for a third time. We have this current entering the node, this current leaving the node. And again, no current enters the negative input of OPAMP3 due to the second constraint equation for ideal OPAMPs. So this is the nodal equation. We can multiply both sides by 100. Let's take Vn3 to the other side, giving us negative 3Vn3. So the output voltage Vo is 3 times Vn3. Let's substitute the expression we have for Vn3, and this completes the analysis. Vo is equal to 6Vs1 minus 6Vs2. So we have completed the analysis of this scary looking op-amp circuit. The output voltage VO is 6 times VS1, the first voltage source, minus 6 times VS2, the second voltage source. And that's the final answer.